Okay, Rachel, how would you classify this figure? What is one way you would classify it? Okay, what's another way we can classify it, Jaden? Rachel said quadrilateral. Why do you think she classified it as a quadrilateral? Um, Brian? Four corners and four sides. Any, and any reason why we classified it as a polygon? What makes it a polygon? Haley? Because it has straight lines and it's closed. It has straight lines and it's closed. Quadrilateral and polygon. The polygon tells us the straight, or the straight sides and that it's closed as a polygon. So I want to draw a couple more figures. I want you to look at the green figures and tell me which ones are quadrilaterals. Benny. None of them. All right. Well, let's see why. Who can tell me why Benny thinks the triangle is not a quadrilateral? Sean. A quadrilateral has to have four sides and four vertices. And this one does not? It has three sides and three vertices. Very good. Avni, this one has four sides. Four sides, but it's not closed. Four sides, but it's not closed, and one of the rules for the quadrilaterals is? It has to be a polygon, which has to be closed. It has to be a polygon, which means it has to be closed, and it is not closed. Okay, why is this one? Lydia? It doesn't have It doesn't have straight lines, but it's closed. It doesn't have straight lines. So um, it's closed, but it doesn't have straight lines, so therefore it cannot be a quadrilateral. It cannot be a polygon, and a quadrilateral has to be a polygon, so it all kind of works out. Okay. Today's lesson is classifying quadrilaterals, and it's 10-4, so you can go ahead and open to that. A quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides and four angles. That's something we already talked about. It was on our, um, our chart paper with the definition already and what we just did on the board. You can name a quadrilateral by the vertices of its angles. Let's talk about what that means. Quadrilateral ABCD is a possible name for the figure shown at the right. Quadrilateral ACBD is not a possible name since the points A and C are not endpoints of the same side. What that means is they have to go in the same order. So if you're starting with this point and you're going to B second, it has to continue around in order. So, so many of the things we've talked about, it doesn't matter the order or it does matter. It does, matter the, it does matter what order you do them in once you start. I can start here and call it DABC or DCBA. But I can't skip across to name it. So I cannot say DBCA because that is not the order. That's not the, we're not talking about DB and CA as, as two of our segments. This way, I don't even have to look at the quadrilateral, and I can tell that there's a segment AB, a BC, a CD, and a DA. I can tell in that quadrilateral that those are the segments that are in the quad without even looking at it. If I looked at this, I would think that there's an AC, a CB, a BD, and a DA. Is that true? Yeah. Is there a CB? Is, I'm sorry, there is a CB, but is there an AC? No. No. Assume that line segments that appear to be parallel are, a par are parallel. So if you're looking at a figure like the figures below, you should assume if they look parallel, they probably are. Does this side and this side appear to be parallel? Yes. yes. Then they probably are. And what we would... Okay. Does this side and this side appear to be parallel? No. No, so they're probably not. Okay. A trapezoid has one pair of parallel lines. Earlier when we were looking at the shape on the board, did we have any parallel lines? No. Yes. Do you want to look at it again? Does that appear to have any parallel lines? No. 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 So could we call it a trapezoid? No. No, we cannot because the definition for trapezoid is that it has to have 
one pair of parallel sides. What if it has two pairs of parallel sides? Would it be a trapezoid? No. No, because it doesn't fall in the definition. The definition does not say at least one pair of parallel lines. It says one pair. And there's your pair right here and here. They are parallel. Okay. A parallelogram is what you get when you have two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of sides of equal length. So let's look at what that means. Does this appear to be parallel with this? Yes. yes. Does this appear to be parallel with this? Yes. 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 So we, the next test is, do the sides appear to be the same length? In this case, we have these little dashes. That tells us that whatever two lines have the dashes, that those are the same length. So just by looking at the drawing, and you can see them at the bottom here, down here, you can see if they have those two little lines, the one line here and the one line here, that means that side is equal length to that side. How many of you have seen that before? That's pretty new, isn't it? That's not really something that you've seen before. Now, if you look at this one, it has two lines. What do you think those two lines mean to each other? These two lines and these two lines. Any guesses? Okay, and what he said is the size, if they're equal or not. And that's exactly what they mean. The length of this side and the length of this side are equal. A rhombus has two pairs of parallel sides and four sides of equal length. So it looks, to, I always call it a sideways square. Doesn't it kind of look like a si square that someone tipped over? So if you look at this, there's one line on each of those sides. What does that mean? If there's one little dashed line on each of those sides, what does that mean, Sophia? That they are all the same length. They're all the same length. Okay? So we now have this side is parallel to this side. And this side is parallel to this side. And all four sides have equal length. So we can call it a rhombus. You guys have known rectangles since probably preschool or even before preschool, especially if you watch like Dora or something. <laughs> she, did you know that all these rules apply to a rectangle? It's two pairs of parallel sides. So does this look parallel to that? Yes. And does that look parallel to this? Yes. Okay, so. Two pairs of sides of equal length, meaning this, those two have equal length, and those two have equal length, okay? And then the last one, because right now, this, these rules are just the same as these rules. Look at two pairs of parallel sides, two pairs of parallel sides. Two pairs of sides of equal length, two pairs of sides of equal length. So why are they different? The last clue, there's four right angles. This does not look like a rectangle tipped sideways. This looks like a rectangle tipped sideways. Rectangle can be classified as a parallelogram. But just because it's a parallelogram does not mean it's a rectangle. It only is a rectangle if it has that four corners that are right. Right angles. The last one is a square. The rules of the square are two parallel sides. That's this side and this side are parallel. The side and the side are parallel. Okay, the sides are um, all equal length. One, two, three, four. And the last one is that it has four right corners. That's what makes it a square. Now, is a square a rhombus? I want you to think about the question. Does it follow the rules of a rhombus? No. no. Oh, yes. Yes. no. Malia. Um, yeah. Okay. So, what rules does it follow? Does it follow that two pairs of parallel sides? Yep. Does it follow four sides of equal length? Yep. So those are the only two rules of a parallel of a rhombus. So a square is a rhombus. It's just a but but having a rhombus, if I showed you this picture and said, "Is that a square?" You cannot say yes because it's missing the four right angles. Okay. Write the names of the quadrilaterals in the Venn diagram. So looking at the purple Venn circle, it says exactly one pair of parallel sides. I want you to look through the six quadrilaterals there and find one that has 
exactly one pair of parallel sides. It cannot have more than one pair of parallel. U, V, T, W. Is that the right way to tell me? Or U, T, W, T. There you go. U, V, W, T. And if we look at this, this is parallel to this, correct? Okay, was that the only one we found? No, no we found other ones. Yeah. Okay, Benny, what did you find? K, L, M, J. How many of you agree with that? These are parallel. And remember the right angles right here? Show me that those lines have to be parallel. K, L, M, J. We did that one and we did this one. Okay. Now I want you to look for figure, uh, quadrilaterals that have two pairs of parallel lines. Christine. F, E, H, G. B, C, D, A. Can you explain what, what was the mistake? He, um, he, he crossed A to C. Yeah, you were crossing across the middle. You can't cross across the middle. Okay. The last one says no parallel sides. And we have already established that this one does not have any parallel sides. Who would like to tell me what we should call the other one? Q, R, N, C. Classify each figure as many ways as possible. So remember we talked about how a rectangle can also be called a parallelogram? That's what they mean by as many ways as possible. So we're going to be writing these words. Quadrilateral, trapezoid, parallelogram, rhombus, rectangle, or square. Any that apply to each of these. So looking at A, I want you to discuss with your partner and list the different ways you can classify A. Who would like to share how they classified this? Oh, and why don't you tell me one way you classified the A? Okay, Emil. I got parallelogram. Parallelogram? Did we get any other classifications? Nicholas? Uh, quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. How many of you agree with quadrilateral? There you go. It's a quadrilateral because it has four sides and four vertices. Let's look at B. Go ahead and discuss with your partner what about B, or what M would it classify as? B. Who would like to share one of the classifications that they have? Aureli. Um, for B, I got trapezoid. B, she got trapezoid. How many of you want to agree with Aureli? And she is. <laughs> Any other classifications for it? Ronnie. How many of you want to agree with Ronnie on quadrilateral? Okay. Who wants to tell me why Ronnie's right about the quadrilateral? It has four sides and four vertices, and it closes. All right, C. C. Make sure you get all the classifications. Who would like to try with their first classification for figure C? Square. How many of you would like to agree with Antonio? Quadrilateral. It does have four sides. That's a, I'm just going to put quad because I'm running out of room. Okay, and, and we have more? Yeah. Horace, what'd you get? A rhombus. How many of you agree with Horace? Any other classifications? Or are we done? Lydia, what do you think? How many of you agree with Lydia on parallelogram? Okay. And um, is there any more? A rectangle. Let's go back. So I'm going to write it. Who would like to share with me um, why did Miss Harrow say that a um, rectangle, that a square can be classified as a rectangle also? It follows all the rules. It has, so it has two pairs of parallel sides. These are parallel. These are parallel. Two pairs of sides that are equal. These two are equal to each other. And these two are equal to each other. The fact that they're all four equal doesn't matter. They still, these still equal each other and those still equal each other. And the last one was the four right angles and it definitely has the four right angles. Okay.